Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Spoken Worth. Thank you for watching the Spoken Worth podcast, where we talk about life, faith, and everything in between. Remember, you matter, you're loved, and you're valued. You're not alone. And so if you're watching this week's episode, click like on this video and subscribe to my YouTube channel. We release weekly episodes every single week at Sunday at 7 o'clock p.m. So, thank you for watching today's episode. Today's episode is titled, Authenticity, Removing the Fig Leaves. I hope it's something you enjoy. Okay, let's begin today's episode. Let's begin with the purpose of today's episode. The purpose of today's episode is to understand what authenticity is and looks like so that we could see the blessing behind authenticity. Furthermore, this episode is purposed to provide a perspective of authenticity that leads us to embrace it as good for our life rather than something we hide from and dread. Hopefully by the end of this episode, we are more afraid of living an inauthentic life than we would be to live an authentic life. We want to be people that embrace, encourage, and create authenticity because we live in a world that is fake and full of suffering because of it. So let's begin today's episode by looking at our objectives. We know our purpose. So what's our objective of today's episode? Our objective is threefold. We're going to be looking at three primary areas of focus around this idea of authenticity. First, we're going to be looking and defining authenticity, inauthenticity, and identifying the fig leaves that we cover ourselves with. In other words, we're going to spend time talking about what authenticity is, what inauthenticity is, and really identifying the fig leaves that we create for ourselves to cover ourselves, to keep people from seeing the real us. And then secondly, we're going to be identifying the risk and the reward of authenticity. That's right. There's a risk and there's a reward of authenticity, and we need to identify both. And then lastly, we're going to be recognizing our need for authentic community and relationships. We are absolutely people that need authentic community and authentic relationships. And so we're going to identify our need for that as well. And so let's begin by just defining authenticity and identifying our fig leaves that we create for ourselves. What do we mean by authenticity? What are we talking about? The authenticity that we're talking about today is the quality of being authentic, being the real deal and not counterfeit. My walk matches my talk. My external matches my internal. Inauthentic then on the other hand, would be counterfeit. When the outside doesn't align with the inside, when my walk doesn't match my talk, my external self is not the same as my internal self. And I want to invite you to think for a moment of an iceberg. This is an illustration I like to use when I think of this concept of authenticity. Think of an iceberg. You always see the outside of the iceberg, but what is rarely seen is the iceberg that exists under the surface. And I want to present to you that we as people are like icebergs. We're often the same way within our life. There is a part of us that we choose to bring above the surface and show others, but many times there is so much more of us underneath the surface. It is never the part of the iceberg that is seen that causes the most damage, but rather it is the part of the iceberg that is unseen that causes the most damage. The same is true when we live inauthentic lives. When we live inauthentically, we live most of our life under the water, unseen and unnoticed, and we choose what parts of ourselves we allow above the surface, above the waters, so that others don't see what lies beneath or underneath the surface and waters. And then when others run into or experience the parts of us that are unseen, hidden or pushed under the surface, under the waters, it causes damage and chaos and hurt and pain. But again, I want to invite you to imagine for a moment if icebergs were not hidden beneath the surface. Imagine if all of the iceberg was above the surface rather than primarily existing under the surface. Imagine the damage that would be avoided by those at sea. And I would present 
But the same would be true relationally if we as people, if we as people made the choice to live authentic life where we don't live beneath the surface, but rather we live above the surface where we don't hide ourselves from others in fear of damage that might occur if they ran into us or ran into the real us. Um, more damage is done. More damage is done when people run into the fake us rather than when it, they run into the real us. But that's the thing. We often hide the real us because we're convinced that the real us is what's causing damage, but it's the inauthenticity that causes damage, hurt, and pain. Authenticity builds trust and connection while inauthenticity destroys trust and connection. And we see this truth played out in the garden, the garden narrative within the Bible, all the way back to the beginning with Adam and Eve and when they're in the garden with God. Genesis 3, 7 through 10. I want us to read this together. Genesis 3, 7 through 10. Then the eyes of both were opened and they knew that they were naked and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves loincloths and they heard the sound of the Lord walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man and said to him, Where are you? And he said, I heard the sound of you in the garden, and I was afraid, because I was naked, and I hid myself. That's Genesis chapter 3, verses 7 through 10. And Adam and Eve hid themselves from God in fear that they would be seen for who they really were. They were clothing themselves with fig leaves and they made loincloths for themselves because they didn't want God to see their nakedness. And in this narrative, in this story, in this text, we see actually a reflection of our own response to sin. We hide behind anything that will cover up who we really are underneath. Because we have been convinced that there are parts of us that are unacceptable. This is our response to shame. Adam and Eve didn't respond to their sin with godly sorrow and repentance. Remember in last week's uh, episode, in episode one, we talked about how shame, uh, when we feel shame rather than guilt, we don't actually find repentance or change. We find uh, uh, we find that we are stuck in our shame. And so we see this from Adam and Eve's response. They don't actually repent and turn to God out of godly sorrow. They hide and distance themselves from God. And, and in fact, uh, they clothe themselves from God. They hide themselves from God with fig leaves. And we're the same in many ways. If people can see our fig leaves, then maybe they won't see our nakedness. And this idea of nakedness extends way beyond, way beyond just this physical sense of nakedness. Nakedness, rather, is, is much deeper than that. Adam and Eve used fig leaves to try to keep God from seeing who they really were underneath because they were embarrassed and ashamed of who they were under the fig leaves. And we're the same way. We cover ourselves with anything to try to stop people from seeing our nakedness. In other words... We will use fig leaves to stop people from seeing who we really are underneath the surface, underneath the cover-up, underneath the facade, the persona, the masks, whatever it is that we wear and put on to keep people from seeing the real us. Those are our fig leaves. And, we, and, and imagine, maybe I cover myself with fig leaves of success so others don't see how much of a failure I feel like. Or maybe I cover myself in the fig leaves of strength and power so others don't feel or see how weak I truly feel. Maybe I cover myself in the fig leaves of intelligence and knowledge and understanding so people can't see how truly incompetent I feel or incapable I feel or how unintelligent I am. Maybe I cover myself in fig leaves of specific emotions like anger because I don't want people to see how sad I am underneath the surface. Maybe I cover myself, myself in fig leaves of isolation and I'm afraid of others rejecting me or not wanting me, right? So I cover myself in fig leaves so that they don't see the reasons not to accept me or not like me. 
Maybe I cover my, uh, myself in fig leaves of reputation and popularity and people pleasing because I don't want people seeing any of the countless reasons to reject me or not like me. Maybe I cover myself in fig leaves of church and religion so people don't see how bad I am. Maybe I cover myself in fig leaves of humor so people don't see how depressed I am. Maybe I cover myself in fig leaves of family and children or fig leaves of money and wealth or success. What are the fig leaves that we cover ourselves in? Fig leaves are anything we can hide behind so people don't see the true us. And fig leaves are what protect us from being authentic. They make us believe it's safe to hide in them and and in our shame and not let others see the real us. But the truth is that our fig leaves keep us from true love and acceptance. If I'm hiding in fig leaves, people may accept me, but they're not accepting really me at all. And so ask yourselves, is hiding in fig leaves worth it? Adam and Eve was loved by God even after their sin. He clothed them in, with an innocent animal. He killed an innocent animal to clothe them and takes care of them. And so what would have happened if they would have ran to God authentically as they really were, not hiding in their fig leaves? Would he have not loved them then? And so we really have to identify how there's, there's no real reason to hide and cover ourselves in fig leaves because we may be af afraid of being rejected, but when we're in our fig leaves, we can never truly be accepted. So really, we're rejected in the end. Our fear of rejection drives us further to rejection rather than to where we need to be, which is love and acceptance. And so we have to next identify the risk and reward of taking off the fig leaves. What would be the risk of taking off the fig leaves? What would be the risk of living authentically? What would be the risk of not hiding underneath the surface, but rather living above the surface? Maybe you're saying, well, people won't like me. I'll be rejected. And there's a few responses I'd have to that. One, do you really want to be accepted or liked by someone for who you really aren't if they wouldn't like you for who you really are? And then secondly, is the risk of rejection more powerful than the reward of authenticity? Is the risk of being rejected more powerful than the blessed, a blessing of being true to yourself and truly seen for who you are? Is the And this is the third question I'd ask. Is the risk of rejection worth compromising yourself? Is fake acceptance more worthy than sacrifice of authenticity? And so we really have to realize that there's a risk. And so imagine the risk. What bad thing might happen to you if you removed your fig leaves and allowed those around you to see you for who you truly are? Maybe the risk is disconnection and isolation. Maybe the risk is lack of trust and intimacy within relationship. Maybe the risk is hurting and betraying others. Those are some risks. But if you can imagine the risk of living authentically, then you can imagine the risk, not the risk, you can imagine the reward of living authentic life. Maybe the risk is disconnection and isolation, but the reward would actually be connection and community. Practicing authenticity helps us to know and believe we aren't alone. Maybe the risk is lack of trust and intimacy within relationships, but that means the reward would be deeper level of trust and intimacy within relationships. Practicing authenticity leads to deeper levels of trust, intimacy, and connection. It is when we begin to live authentic life and truthful, honest life in which trust and intimacy begins to develop within our life. And then maybe you're thinking the risk is hurting and betraying others. If I live authentically, I'll hurt and betray others. But that means the reward is healing and helping others. Being a person who practices authenticity creates safety and room for others to practice being authentic. We can't find healing or help in ways we really need when we push those things under the surface or cover them in fig leaves. There's a reward to authentic living, to authentic life. This brings us to our third point that we need to discuss for this episode, which is the need for authentic community and relationships. See, we as people are looking for something real in a world that is fake. 
But unfortunately, many communities, many spaces, many environments, many relationships are unsafe and they're unsafe because they primarily lack a component of authenticity. Churches are oftentimes unsafe because they lack a component of authenticity. And, and, and I know all relationships, a lot of relationships, even outside of church, lack authenticity, and so they're not always safe. But when you think of a safe space, a safe environment, a safe relationship, what, what, where should that be? What should that be? That should be church. That should be the family of God. That should be where I can go and connect with God and His people in a safe place authentic way. But how often do we go to church and we're, we're asked, how are you doing? Or we ask someone else, how are you doing? And we hear, or we say, I'm blessed. I'm fine. I'm doing great. Just wonderful. But how often are we actually not any of those things? How often are we down, burdened, sad, depressed, and in need? Church should be a safe place for people to not have to hide who they are or where they're at or what they're feeling or where they've been or what they've done. They should be able to come authentically with truth and honesty and vulnerability. And think of homes and families and spouses and marriages and parents and children. Think of how many children don't feel safe to be honest with their parents because their parents, one, aren't honest first with them and aren't honest with each other. Many spouses are authentic and honest and truthful with each other and it destroys intimacy, it destroys connection, and, and it destroys the marriage. And it trickles down all the way to the children to where now the children don't feel safe to be honest and open and authentic with the parent. And so a community and a relationship can become more and more safe when it practices and encourages authenticity. When churches encourage others to bring all of who they are to church rather than just the acceptable parts of them to church. That's when they can find transformation for all of their life. Even better, when a church is full of people who are practicing authentic, truthful, honest, vulnerable life together, that is a safe place for people to come as they are authentically. Marriages can grow and be stronger and, and have more intimacy and closeness and can be created. That can be created through the practice and implementation of authenticity, of honesty, of truth, of vulnerability with one another. So stepping into authenticity and refusing to hide ourselves from those around us can radically transform, strengthen, and perhaps even save our relationships. But the same is true on the other end. Stepping into hiding and covering ourselves with fig leaves and living beneath the surface can radically damage, hinder, and limit, and potentially kill our relationships. And so what's the, what's the point of this episode? What's the application? What's the so what? It's found in three texts, three scriptures. John 1.14, Hebrews 1.3, and Galatians 6 2. John 1 14 says, And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory. Glory is the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. Hebrews 1 3 says, The Son is the radiance of God's glory and the exact representation of his being. And so, in John 1.14 and Hebrews 1.3, both of these scriptures communicate this beautiful truth that Jesus did not withhold any of himself from us. He lived completely authentically. He made himself fully known. He came to us as the exact representation of God's being. He appeared externally exactly as God actually was. He walked his talk. He wasn't fake. He was the real deal. And see, Jesus calls his followers, those who called themselves disciples, to do the same. And that brings to mind Galatians 6.2. Galatians 6.2 says, Carry each other's burdens and therefore fulfill the law of Christ. See, it's hard to carry someone's burden it's hard to carry a burden in which lies beneath the surface. It's hard to help someone with something they haven't shared. It's hard to receive help with something or for something 
that you keep hidden and repressed and in the dark. The law of Christ is the law of loving God with all of our heart, mind, and soul and loving our neighbor as Jesus has loved us. And see, Christ loved us by living in an authentic, truthful, and honest relationship with the Father and with us. We can choose to love one another in the same way by being a safe person for others to authentically be seen for who they are and where they're at and how they're feeling and even despite of all the things they've ever done. See, Jesus Christ is our great high priest who carries our burdens out of love and understands us fully and completely. He understands our weaknesses, temptations, and emotions, and we can authentically come to him without the fig leaves and above the surface. We can go to Jesus as we really are, not as we want others to see. He can carry our burdens with us and for us, and we can yoke ourselves to him. For he says in Matthew, he says in the Gospel of Matthew, Come to me all who are heavy burdened and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. And so when we hear the call of Jesus and accept that offer of rest, by living authentic life, truthful, honest, vulnerable life with God and with each other. And so the application is to find a safe place and a relationship, find a safe community, an environment in which you can practice and step into authenticity. And by practicing authenticity in those safe places, those relationships or those communities, you know, by practicing authenticity, you you develop and, and get the courage needed to practice and implement authenticity into the rest of your life. And then create authenticity and safety to be honest and truthful by practicing that yourself. Practice being an authentic, truthful, and safe person and offer that to other people. And really reflect and spend time identifying the risk and reward of authenticity in your own life. What would it cost you? What would be the risk of taking off the fig leaves? But then identify the reward. Because there is a reward. And I believe that reward is something God wants for us. But we have to step into authenticity. And remember, God said in Genesis 2.18, It is not good for man to be alone. So stop living alone. Take off the fig leaves, live above the surface, and step into authenticity. Thank you for watching this week's episode. Remember, click like and subscribe to my YouTube channel and catch ne next week's episode at 7 o'clock p.m. on Sunday. And remember, if you're interested in authentic community, consider visiting thecrucibleproject.org. That's thecrucibleproject.org. You can live authentic life and have authentic community and you can learn to live authentically throughout the rest of your life. But whether it be the Crucible Project, your church, or a community, or an environment, or a relationship within your life, I encourage you to step into authentic living. It'll be a blessing.